Greetings YouTube and welcome to the blue corner. In this video I'm going to be following up on the Q&A announcement I posted last week and answering the questions that you guys asked in that as well as the last Q&A that I posted which was about two months ago. And spoiler alert, if you ask any questions in here, I'll also take them into consideration when I do the next one of these which will probably be around the end of August, early September. Two to three months seems to be a good time frame for how often I want to do these. So yeah, just that. And then, of course, they don't have to be strictly card games. They can be about some other things. There's a couple questions here actually about non-card game things. And lastly, pardon how I sound right now as I'm currently fighting a summer cold. I picked it up a couple days ago and I was hoping I would have gotten over it in time for this, but I couldn't. So we're just going to kind of push through and do this anyway. So with that being said, let's dive right into this. Our first question comes from Master Beetle 2 asks, what clans would you recommend if I wanted to play them in premium standard since we know what is getting support in the first couple of sets? So just to point out though, when this question was asked, we didn't know the full contents of VBT1 and we certainly didn't know anything about the extra booster aside from the fact of what the VRs were going to be and what the reprints were. So with that in mind, let's see here. So as far as standard format goes, you have to ask, do you want to be competitive or do you just want to play? Because if you just want to play, Nova Grappler is a good pick. The deck's dirt cheap compared to the other decks you're you're basically just having to work go out of your way to pick up perfect risers and that's it like the rest of the deck doesn't cost anything because they didn't get any good triple there's a sure kaiser is not good you just play four perfect riser four battle door fighter and then what your double bears are riser custom and high powered riser custom and your draw trigger yeah, I think that's about it. So you can build Nova Grappler for under $100, and that'll be enough to let you compete. Now, the thing is, though, the deck kind of just loses to a lot of things because damage denial is a thing. Kagero just eats the deck alive. And what is it? I think Oracle Think Tank can just grind you. Granted, if your opponent is stupid and gives you too much counterblast to work with going into your perfect riser turn, then you should probably kill them because... Uh, that deck's, that card is good. It's just, unfortunately, you don't have a whole lot else to work with. So you've got that. Now, if you wanted to be competitive, I'd recommend Kagura or Oracle Think Tank. Kagura is best deck in format, and Oracle Think Tank is the only deck that has a reasonable chance against it. However, Oracle Think Tank is on a clock against Kagura. It has to try and close out the game as soon as it can, because once they start riding and swinging through with Waterfall, waterfall turn after turn after turn, you you just die. Like, being able to turn off your Sentinels, especially your Protect Gives, which is one of the main reasons that you play your clan in itself, is pretty strong. But the fact that that Waterfall is probably swinging at you for 40 to 50k plus every turn. Because if you're a Kagro player and you're up against Oracle Tank Tank, you put all your Force Markers on Vanguard so you can eat away at that hand. And eventually you just die through all those repeated swings. So... There's that little thing. Against the other decks of the format, I think Oracle Think Tank just beats them because it can grind out Royal Paladin, and if you are smart against Nova Grappler, you can also grind them out. And then Kagero just shits on everyone. So, there's that. And then, by the time, like, the clans that you want to play, or at least more clans come in, you can always flip those decks around because Kagero is a popular deck in general because it's Kai, and all of his decks are fairly popular, and people want to pick up his stuff when new stuff comes out, and they will pay a decent amount of money for it. And Oracle Think Tank you can also move because it's a waifu deck, so that will always have some kind of inherent value to it. Now, as far as regarding premium format goes, um, you've, you've got Oracle Think Tank again because Tom Water is insane, and you've got Nova Grappler because... With the exception of Oracle Think Tank, you should be able to shit on a lot of decks because Victor, under the new rule set, as well as some of the cards released in this recent set, particularly Battledore Fighter, Riser Custom, and the new triggers, makes the deck incredibly potent. Um, what else is there? Now that we know what EB1 does, also, uh, Premium Mega Colony looks legit scary. Like, you've seen the memes that W Slasher posted, no fight, no guard, and he's got a point, like, that... Uh, Armored Antlion under Zoa pretty much requires, like, the only way you can stop that thing is with just zero shields and, like, ones and twos. Like, you can't perfect guard that, and that's usually your answer to Zoa. So, that in itself is scary. But you've also got Phantom Black boosting whatever gets called down by Zoa, making it so that you can only use triggers and your protect gifts to block that. I think, I think you can sentinel those things. So, 
like Mega Colony in general is just will be pretty strong in that format because of the interactions of the new cards have with some of your G units. I just don't know what you oh how many copies of Armor and Antlion you would run because that would cut into your Dark Race Grade Threes. But maybe you could get away with it. Who knows? Um, what else is there? I don't know about premium Tachis or premium Spikes with the new stuff. And um, yeah, that's all I can really say about that. And then our next question is from Justin Ayla, who asks a similar thing. What would you recommend people play if their clans are not in standard yet? For example, if I play Genesis, what is a good substitute? So if you like Genesis, then I'd also recommend Oracle Think Tank. Because honestly, the current Imperial Daughter deck plays like Revelation if it wasn't shitty. You do kind of the same thing. You manipulate your draws, your checks, through the effect of your scries, which is very similar to what Revelation does. But you also have strong, good units such as Promised Daughter, Amaterasu, and Dear God. That thing's kind of dope. But, of course, I have to point out again, Kagro matchup is really on the iffy side. You can win it. It's just, it's diff once the longer the game goes, the less likely you are to do that. And then otherwise, I'd also recommend just picking up any of the Q4 clans because they are the main characters. They will be some of the first people to get... Or they will be some of the first clans to get a second batch of support. And depending on how that support is, people want to buy into that. And especially now how people are like, Oh, I see this picture of a card. I'm going to immediately buy it out on TG Player. Hashtag this Dragonic Descendant. And no bell. And you can take advantage of that by saying, What's this? You want to pick up Cogirl? Well, sir, I happen to have this Draconic Waterfall deck on me. Would you like to buy it off me so that I can go pick up a clan that I actually want to play, like Grand Blue or Genesis? And there you go. It's kind of what I'm doing for OTT. I picked it up so I have something to play, but once I have more clans to work with, i.e. depending on what, G or what standard Genesis does, I'll probably get rid of it so I can pick up that deck. Like it's, it's also just something I'm holding me over until Grand Blue comes out. But what I'm really waiting on is for Naru's. And I legit thought about picking up Kagro because it's a similar playstyle. They're both control decks. And I know that Kagro will always be popular enough that if I wanted to get rid of it so that I can fund Naru's, I could do it. So there's that. So TLDR, if you want to play a deck that has a similar playstyle to Genesis, Oracle Think Tank, if just in general, you can pick up any of the Team Q4 clans and then flip them when you don't need them anymore because the clan you actually want to play is now legal for standard format. Adamus Zero asks, what are your expectations for on the Narukami support in the new series? Will it have an aspect on retiring and power like the old days? Or will it be bind oriented, allowing us to be splashable for premium decks? Um, this one's a tough one because on one hand, I would like us to be bind plus power gain so that you could combine Narukami with old with Narukami with new, but that still makes us play like a discount cargo clan like the old days, and that wasn't really like the best thing to have going for us. Like, I think Narukami at its essence is best when it's focusing on punching the board, the deck, like Brawlers and eventually what Kaisers will become, because I feel like that's that exemplifies what Narukami is. Just repeated wiping and in Brawler's case, actually getting benefits off of it. It's just unfortunately they dropped the ball with the deck because they didn't want to support it after set five. If they decided to, if they stopped printing like Eradicator support that nobody wanted and instead focused on Brawlers, I think that sub deck would still be not awful. Like if you could, if they made like a Big Bang Knuckle that could punch the board and also buff your rear guards like Warning did, oh boy, could you imagine set nine Brawlers with like I don't know Vmax as a potential finisher? But um, thing is though, we'll be getting Detonic Stinger and Drill Dragon as our main boss units. I'm pretty certain this is now, and they didn't really do the whole punch gimmick. They were more focused on just spot removal, and in the other case, just completely wiping the board. So they'll probably go with the whole retire and power game like the old, but I, I just that's not really what I want. I'm like I want them to I want them to be able to just punch shit and benefit off of that and maybe even not be forced like a lot of people are thinking they are maybe we could actually be protect because that clan or rather that gift style has been pretty good so far like people myself included were like protects probably gonna be like the not as great of the three gifts but here we are oracle think tanks pretty good mega colonies okay and grand blue in general just might be really strong because of its kagro matchup and 
because these clans are getting legit rearguard oriented finishers such as the deer, the stag, and I'm going to assume undead dragon. So maybe, just maybe, Naru's would get something of an equivalent count if they were made protect, but we'll probably be Force, and that's still not awful because Force just is really strong defensively in general because of our, our stat lines. And you could throw the Force gift marker on things like Shatura or Descendant in Sigma in premium format, and that'd be pretty stupid. <laughs> oh, 21k Shatura swinging? Yeah. Especially when you've got like 8k or higher boosters behind it. No, wait, no, you can't put boosters behind. Yeah, wait, I'm thinking of XL for a second. No, yeah, you could make Descendant 21k with like, uh, I don't know, a big boost behind it. That'd be pretty sweet. Not to mention some of the cards we'll get will be pretty nice. Like, I'm expecting Dragonic Death Scythe, Thunderstorm Dragoon, and Red River Dragoon to get retrains, and Vermilion will also get a retrain, plus probably the Origin Rare, and that'll look sick as fuck because we never really got a full art SP Vermilion, and uh, that's a kind of a shame. So, there will be that. And also, that was, that'll work with Crimson in the very nice capacity too but the other thing too is like even if they made the shit bind focused i don't think it would still help us a whole lot in premium because naru's in premium kind of suffer from a really underwhelming first stride like but buster was good for its set but it was the set after that and onwards where first stride started doing way too much and uh but buster just really didn't do enough like think about it this way balam allows you to kill a dude, buff your front row, and get four drives on his persona flip. And the buster on his persona flip kills one and binds one from field and binds one from drop. Like, that clear difference in power between what Naros could do in premium compared to what other clans can do in premium is still going to put us at a bit of a disadvantage. Like, I think if for like premium Naras, you gotta go first and get the heal trigger so you can get the generation break three, so you can try and thunderstrike seven of a buster your opponent, and then like now you're playing like catch up. But think of all that you're working to, all of those hoops you're jumping through, just to be able to like deal with, uh, just be able to like have a good offense. So regardless of what they do with Naras in standard, I don't think it's gonna help us a whole lot in premium. And I might just simply not play premium Naras. We'll see. If nothing else, I might just give the Kaiser deck a shot because Warning, I think, is a potentially strong card in the format. If you Warning your opponents and they're playing XL and they've got like three or even four to five units in front row, you're going to be getting some pretty swole lines. And Crimson Legioning into Vermilion with a Force Gift will make your Vanguard line, what, 42 inherently? So that's also not that bad. Um, Crown Holder Dragon will get good. Um, we'll see. Like, it's really up in the air what will happen with Naros, whether we'll be Force, whether we'll be focused on the Tonics or Kaiser, or maybe maybe they'll take a page out of the, out of the Mega Colony book and start with Eradicators and just give us a Senate right away. That could be a thing, and if that's the case, then Premium Descendant with a Superior Rise strategy involving Strike Dragon Dragon? Ooh, that could lead to some memes. So, I, I, I wish I could give you a solid answer, but I just do not know, like... I've been talking with some other Nara players about this, and like the general consensus is that binding would be nice, but we'd much rather just have a better identity because we don't want to be discount Kagro a second time around. And I agree with that. Like I, I don't want to be seen as a bad Kagro deck. I want to be seen as a good Narakami clan. So yeah, unfortunately, that's all I got for you on this. Drive check asks. What is the worst anime I've ever watched? And what is the worst card game moment of my life? So I'm going to try and be really brief on the worst anime part because I could go into a long winded rant on this and I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is. So as far as worst anime goes, easily it is Gundam Seed Destiny. That show is so bad that I, even, I still shit talk it even now. And it's got to be what, over 10 years old now? Like... Destiny is not good, and if you ask any Gundam fan worth their salt, they will t probably bring up Destiny as one of the worst ones that they've ever seen. Now, I think since then, there's been some other really bad ones. I think Gundam Age gets a really bad rap. I don't know. I've never watched it. But uh, Destiny, though, sticks uh, get, left a bad taste for me because it started off really promising. Jin could have been a really great character, and I liked kind of what they were doing with Athrin at the start, but then the series kind of went to shit at around the quarter end. Basically, once Jesus Yamato comes back in and 
takes the spotlight from Shin and makes himself main character again. It's kind of when the entire everything fell apart. Like, my law, my god, the, that one line, I understand, but Kagali is crying. That kind of just sums up, like, the shit writing in general. Again, again, the, the writer of that show was just a psychopath as a whole. And I think the only reason why she was able to get with the shit get away with the shit that she did was because she was married to the director because you had scripts turned in really late and as a result recap episodes had to be done repeatedly like Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains a problem it had with its first season was the amount of recaps it had and whenever a show does multiple recap episodes within a short span there's usually something going on backstage and Destiny my god had so many of these it had a flashback and like 10 episodes in it had a flashback after like the 25th episode and then it had two flashbacks within five episodes of each other near the fucking end of the series because they could not manage their time properly and the reuse of animations it's a fucking meme at this point of how like certain animation cycles were reused particularly like the freedom gundams movements were carried over to the strike freedom gundams movements and those were carried over to another show that the guy now does called cross anji i think it's called like, I never watched it, but I saw some clips of the titular mecha, the Vilkis? Is that what it's called? And its movements mirrored that of the Freedom Gundam. And this is a show that came out years later. And they're still reusing stock footage. What the fuck? Like, I'm already going into this kind of ranty mode, and I'm trying to keep it limited, but TLDR, it was a show with squander potential, shitty writing, even worse characters... Reuse of animation, quality animation at that. Like, we're talking Dragon Ball Super Bad and recap episodes up the ass. And as a result, it's a show that is so fucking terribly broken that uh, you need, like, fan fiction writers have to fix it up. Super Robot Wars had to go out of its way to fix it up. They were able to do it. And as a result, Shin was actually made a likable character in the Z series, much like how the Super Robot Wars Alpha series turned Shinji into a likable character. It's actually kind of funny when I bring that up because, like, Super Robot Wars Alpha 3 had Gundam Seed debut, and Kira is being a whiny bitch in that one, and Shinji, having been around manly characters like Gai Shishio and Zenga Zonvolt, tells Kira to fucking grow a pair. You know it's fucking bad when Shinji Ikari is telling you to fucking man up. Oh, oh man. Um, okay, so... We've already gone on too long about this, but TLDR Gundam Seed Destiny is the worst anime I've watched, and it's and nothing has been able to come close. Vanguard G has kind of flirted with it, but it's been able to salvage things too. Because it's had some redeeming qualities of it, but Gundam Seed just Gundam Seed Destiny, my bad, had like a good start, but then it just became bad like a quarter in, and it just never recovered. On a side note, though, I do like the original Gundam Seed, and it was my favorite for a very long time. Since then, though, I've had the experiences to watch things like G Gundam and Gundam 00 and Gundam X and Zeta Gundam, and I like them much more than that of the original Seed, but I still like original Seed. And then as far as the worst card game moment of my life, let's see. So it have to be one single thing that I regret, huh? probably when i punted my chance of potentially getting a top at a regionals what was it two years ago now yeah because it was fire king uh it was like uh shining victories format yeah it was shining victories format uh blue eyes was not a legit deck yet though because i don't think we had an alternative dragon it, it was fire king cosmo format with B PK Fire and uh, Extra Deck Monarchs being, like, decks. And I remember this one because my friends still rip me about it. I was playing against a Fuffle player. I Brit game one, and I just straight up lost. So I just gave him the game so I could go into game two. He had no idea what I was up against. I make him go first. Do I make him go first? I don't know what happened. But yeah, I make him go first. His board's under one because it's Fluffles. They can't really go first. And I start going off. And I have the chance to to OTK him and take it to game three where I have a reasonable chance, I think, of winning if I go first. But I forget to use the effect of Shark Fortress in order to get the extra attack, which would have made it a game shot. And I didn't catch this until battle phase in which it was too late to go back and fix it. And as a result, I can't kill him. I leave him with about 1,000 life points. And as a result, I have to settle for making a board that I think gives me uh, Cyber Dragon Infinity Negate as well as one other thing. Like, I think I can stop two of his plays, but the guy is also apparently a notorious sack, and he just breaks my board and kills me. 
So as a result, what could have been a chance for me to get a top because I was X one one at this point. So if I won that game, I probably would have gotten. If I won that match, I probably would have topped. And I was pretty confident enough that if I was able to go first with that and didn't brick mind you that was a big thing because this was cosmo we're talking about you either bricked or you didn't but if i went first i might have and didn't brick i might have had a reasonable chance of not dying but um fortunately i fucked myself over pretty badly in that game and as a result i lost my chance of topping and i still get ribbed about it to this day uh close second would be just making the decision to play in the regionals last year during norden format during uh fusion substitute zodiac format i regret that decision i didn't want to do it my friends convinced me to do it because it was the last chance to play in a master roll three and uh yeah one round into that tournament i was like i don't like doing this at all so that's also like a thing that i regret but like as far as like the single worst moment playing card games though it had to be when i punted my chance at the top so there you go hope you that, those answered your questions our last question for this is from card by king who wants to know what my favorite mega man battle network game is battle network six falls are i happen to find that six has the best combination of both gameplay and story whereas one to three have a fantastic storyline and four and five have really fun battles in it six happens to do a little bit of both its plot isn't as good as two and threes in my opinion however it makes up for by being able to give you some pretty good fights and some pretty good options for your fighting. The Navi customizer system is more or less like three, except I think it's a little bit better. And crosses are far better than style changes. And truth be told, I don't think style changes are as good as everyone else does. I always felt like soul unisons were better. And crosses are a nice happy medium between the two. They don't go away like soul unisons do after three turns. However, they're not as powerful as Souls, but they're still pretty good in their regard. Tango Cross is one of my favorite transformations of the franchise. It's beaten out only by Proto Soul and, to a lesser extent, uh, Wolf Noise and Je uh, Cygnus Noise from Star Force 3. And uh, I even have videos of me in using the Tango Cross in Battle Rick 6 against both Beast Mega Man SP and Base BX, as well as a quote-unquote deck profile featuring the Tengu Cross folder that I used in that video, in addition to a breakdown in just Battle Network Theory being discussed in it, which I will link to in the description box below. And um, what can I really say? Like, I think 6 was a really good way to wrap up the series. It had definitely gone on a bit too long at this point. Like, honestly, 3 would have been a good stopping point, but... Battle Network was kind of printing money back then, so of course they made a fourth game and then a fifth game, and they kind of lost their way with that. But then they managed to wrap it up with the sixth game, and it was pretty good. And then we got Star Force, and ooh, the first one was okay, the second one was not, and the third one was amazing. If you want to play, and like if you have not played Mega Man Star Force Three, I highly recommend that you do so as it's a really really great game in the franchise and it's a really nice addition to the battle work style just um it's a different style of battle system but i feel like you can you could dive right into star force 3 and i don't think you would be too lost from it um there's definitely some references to the first game and the second game to an extent but i think you can still play it and get by because it just happens to have some nice little nuances to its gameplay that make it just tremendously more fun to play than the first two games of that series but that's going off track tldr battle network six falls are is my favorite of the two battle network six games because i like tengu cross and aqua cross is also pretty good and the crosses in that game in general i feel like just play differently from each other and change the way your gameplay goes out in battles as opposed to the crosses in battle network six falls are where they all are just element plus 30 and that's more or less it the only cross in gregar i think that actually changes how your fights go out would be oh what is it it was what there's five crosses per um i think it's i think it's uh slash cross which actually changes what your battle chip does other than just giving a buff and that just gives you a not very fast sonic boom compared to the likes of the balance the falls are crosses where 
they can make you reconsider how you want to build your folder because some chips will work better with the application of your crosses on them. Also, dust cross is low key pretty good too, as being able to mulligan every turn is pretty sweet. So, now that all being said, though, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all for the questions. We'll be doing this again within a couple months. So, again, if you want to get a head start, post questions you have for that video down here, and I will look at these questions in addition to whatever gets posted on the eventual QA announcement video and make it an appropriate QA video within. Uh, a couple months from now so we're looking at end of august and or early to mid september it depends on what's going on with the schedule then because i'm i might be going to our regionals at that time so that might interfere with me when i get a chance to shoot a video so with that being said hope you guys enjoy this again thank you all for watching until next time this is blue star 899 jacking out